It's Bronco Chat and a championship edition of Bronco Chat. Welcome in. David Gentilly with Santa Clara Athletics, joined by the head coach of the national champion Santa Clara women's soccer team, Jerry Smith. Coach, thanks for taking the time. Your team wins the national championship. Give me the first thing that comes to mind when you think of that. Uh, thankfulness. We're, we're really just thankful. We're thankful for Oh God, the hundreds of people that made this possible for us, um, you know, for um, finally getting over the hurdle with our county, uh, our conference, all the people that worked in our conference office to make this possible. Uh, there's so many people at Santa Clara University from our administration to our athletic administration to our sports med team. I mean, we, we got COVID tested four times a week and they, they tested all the athletes on all the teams and that alone was a monumental task. And then you try to schedule practice it. Everybody's playing at the same time. And I mean, just, I can't even fathom how they put this together. Then the NCA figures out a way for us to play a fall sport in a spring championship. And we all go to North Carolina. They had the entire men's tournament and the entire women's tournament there at the same time. The folks at Wake Med Soccer Park who put on the tournament for, for the men and men and women, I don't even know how they managed it. On top of just managing a very difficult schedule with so many teams there, we had uh, weather delays and lightning delays and canceled practices. And, you know, then mostly just thankful for the resilience of the student athletes on the team. Uh, well, before I say that, which I'm mostly thankful for that, thankful for the tireless effort of our staff that works with our team on an everyday basis. I mean, it was a Herculean effort uh, to get through this season, and there's just too many people to thank, um, but I'm very grateful for that. And again, the players, what, what the players went through, David, is just really, and no one will understand it, so it, whatever my words say won't come close to what they really felt. You know, I would say this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do um, in my professional career. Uh, and I was living at home with my family. Our players didn't have that opportunity. Uh, many of them lived in a room by themselves for the past five months. Um, and the players that lived with other teammates uh, weren't in a room by themselves, but they couldn't see anybody except their teammates. And, and while we love each other, uh, when you're just with the same people every single day, seven days a week for five months, that's just not an easy thing. And so, uh, you know, I just, I, I don't know if I could have done what the players did. Um, and so the resiliency they showed, the grit that they showed, the toughness, the discipline, uh, just remarkable. And so uh, thankful. I, I'm really, really, really thankful for the opportunity to compete for the championship and, uh, yeah, National Champs has a good ring to it. I like hearing that for sure. <laughs> we were talking a moment ago, and you said, wow, what a 14 months it's been for this team. You likened it to a movie script and said, no, by the time you get done writing down what actually happened, you can throw the script out. Tell me about what it's like to be on that entire ride for the last 14 months. So much uncertainty, so much adversity and then to come out the other end of it with the national championship. Yeah, it, it's really unbelievable. And once again, if I try to describe it, I'll fall short, way short of what it really felt like, you know, but, you know, the we live in the first county in America to shelter at home. And so in March, we went home. We had no spring season. We had no spring games in March. Um, most of the country did. Um, we worked hard to try to get ready for the fall. We were pushing hard, just like we normally do over the summer and getting ready for the fall. And we came in and our players are working hard and slowly but surely we realized there isn't gonna be a fall season and there are no games. Um, so we're in a, we're in an athlete, a women's soccer bubble with no in-person classes, no games and nobody on campus. And uh, it was a pretty lonely feeling. And we all looked around at each other like, what are we doing? Why, why are we doing this? What, what's our purpose? What's, when are we ever gonna play again? And uh, 
you know, not to mention that the whole state of California was on fire. We woke up every single day. Can we even practice today? We had to look at the AQI every single morning. Can we practice or not? Can we practice for two hours or one hour? Can we have 100% intensity or 50% intensity? It was just a nightmare. Uh, it really was like being in a nightmare. Like I just, I came home one day, I was sitting in my backyard, like, could this possibly get any worse for, for us? And, uh, I was discouraged. I was depressed. Um, the players were, um, we actually cut our fall practice short because it just, we just, we didn't know what we were doing and it was just causing more mental health issues for all of us. So we cut it short. We went home, we decompressed. Um, I actually had, I've been waiting to have knee replacement surgery and I elected to have it in late December because I said, you know what? I just, I don't think we're going to have a season. I might as well just pull the trigger on my knee replacement. I had knee replacement, full knee replacement in late December, uh, recovering in January. Uh, most of the rest of the country had started up in the beginning of January with practices and getting ready. And again, Santa Clara County wouldn't let us. Uh, finally, in late January, we get the word that we're a go. Uh, we got the players back. They were completely out of shape, of course, because we didn't want to push them again for no reason like we did in the fall. And uh, we lost our whole non-conference schedule. We ended up only playing seven conference games. Uh, fortunately, we did very well in those seven conference games. Uh, we were undefeated. Uh, we, we actually played only seven total games, six conference games. We played BYU twice, once in a non-conference game, just to try to get another game. Um, you know, we had uh, games canceled for four for a COVID. Um, you know, we, we get into the NCAA tournament. We watch the selection show as a team on a Monday morning. And uh, we're, we know we're in the tournament because we're the automatic qualifier by winning the league. And uh we also find out on that morning we're the one of the top 16 seeds, which we were honored to be. Um, we go out to have a light practice and uh, our best leader on the field, Sophia Jones, uh, four year starter, senior team captain, center back, stud, great. One of my great leaders of all time ruptures her Achilles tendon in a very light practice and we lose her for the tournament. And uh, as every soccer coach knows, one of the places you don't wanna lose, you don't wanna lose anybody for the season, but to lose a starting center back, a four year starter, that just is really tough to manage. And, uh, and then we had to wait a month before we played our first NCAA game from our last regular season game. It's really hard to just kind of be sharp and not let the rust set in a little bit. So that was difficult. Um, once we got to North Carolina, um, our team was focused and prepared and, and ready. And, and if I'm honest, we killed it. We killed it in the tournament. We just were, we played five power five schools, Ohio State, Arkansas, Clemson, North Carolina, Florida State. Four of those teams are ranked in the top 10. We went through the number one seed, the number two seed, the number six seed, the number 14 seed. I mean, we, we just, the team was so good. And uh, this is how good we were. When we played Florida State in the championship game, um, Florida State was number one seed, uh, best team in the country, undefeated ACC champs. We were in the final four with three other ACC teams, Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida State. And Florida State adjusted what they had done in every single game to be the number one seed. They adjusted to play us. They changed what they did all year just to play us. That's how good we were in the tournament. Their coaching staff said, we cannot play Santa Clara straight up. They're too good. And for our team to be in a situation where the number one seed adjusts to us after everything we've been through, I just, it's, it's, I just can't even believe it, but that's how good our players were. And uh, they just showed tremendous discipline and resiliency and, and grit. And honestly, in the, in, I felt really good about our coaching 
in our first four playoff games. Uh, the final, we, we didn't get the coaching right. And uh, once again, credit to our players. You know, there, there are several things that I wish I could go back and change in terms of uh, our preparation for the final, uh, halftime talk for the final, adjustments we made. I would do things differently. I, I, I don't feel, I, I feel really confident in my coaching ability and our staff's coaching ability. We just didn't do a great job in the final. And in spite of that, we still won the championship. I mean, the, the players that we have on our team, just they just deserve so much credit. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, you add all this up and it's just, I mean, and I'm only giving you snippets of it. There are certainly more, <laughs> a lot more things. Like in the fall, we got together and I had to apologize to my whole team. I had to, I stood up one day in practice and I said, guys, I'm really sorry. I pride myself on handling challenging situations and being resourceful and figuring out the right buttons to push in every every coaching situation that I faced. I said, I cannot figure this out. I'm depressed. You're depressed. None of us want to be here. It just was, it was that miserable. And that was in October. And here we are in May celebrating a national championship just to go from one extreme to the other like that. in in, in, in a short period of time, that's just not very easy to do. And, uh, we've had a lot of great teams, a lot of great players. I don't know that a different group of players could have handled what we handled and come out on top of everything like we did. And so just amazing, amazing student athletes. And again, a tireless staff. 